Hello, everybody. Hi, everybody. With us. Oh, our service kind of went out for a second. Are you okay there, Donna? Oh, Everything yeah, I'm good? fine. Okay. I'm fine. Thank you, everybody, for being here. It's so awesome to have all of you. And tonight, Donna, Reverend Donna and I are going to talk about, well, not only the Idaho 4 case, but also Brian Koberger in particular. So it's going to be a really good show. Very interesting. You're going to hear stuff that I don't think you've heard before, which is always exciting um, and necessary at a time such as this, especially while we're kind of waiting for the next step. As of yesterday, Ryan, uh, Brian Koberger put his case what do we want to call it on pause to on hold kind of, on hold yeah on hold mm -hmm. to uh, investigate this indictment is that right donna it's like to yeah so they had so he says or his lawyer says they haven't even received the whole copy of the grand jury uh transcripts and right. he wants so they want time to review those and they want them all completely at one time not a page here and a page there so right that's what they've been getting they they said they don't even have a copy of the transcript that they used to indict him with the grand jury you know testimonies and so they yeah. want to put the trial on hold until they get that it's very interesting too that he's waiting to give his alibi right i i feel yeah. like if you're innocent wouldn't that be kind of like an easy thing i mean just you know right what I mean? well yeah and and we know he's extremely likely not innocent so. oh i agree i that's how i feel too donna yeah 100 um, percent feel the same way as you and i know that right now there's a lot of question about is he guilty is he not guilty and that's one of the main reasons too i want you to speak because oh i de i definitely not, believe that brian is she guilty saw this. oh yeah donna i do too I do too. And I think you've seen stuff before it's time. And that's going to be kind of what we we go over a bit tonight as well. So it's going to yeah. be interesting. Real quick, I want to tell everybody about three weeks ago, I put out a video about Reverend, Don, Reverend Donna when she solved, in my opinion, truly solved the case of um, the Lori Vallow slash, you know, JJ and Ty Lee, they're, they were missing out of Idaho at the time. I urge everybody to watch that video because you will see why I lean on Donna for so much insight in these cases. I mean, she got details down to the necklace, the particular things about Ty Lee's body. I mean, just the detail was unreal, Donna. And anybody who followed the trial that knew what, you know, your readings and stuff, right. they had to be floored because I was floored so much I had to make a video about it. It was just nuts. Yeah. And thanks How for making that feel? video too. Sometimes it's hard oh. when I'm doing it myself because I start seeing it all again and stuff. Oh, I can only imagine. Yeah. No, I, it was my honor because I just couldn't believe that wouldn't everybody be talking about this, you know, but it's just, it's too taboo for people still, I guess. It's like a conspiracy. It really is a conspiracy of mainstream, right? Yeah, so I, I get 650 pages of transcripts, hundreds yeah. of details, accurate, but then yeah. Vanity Fair chooses to say, oh, she had it wrong. Um, Brian didn't work in a bread factory with his parents or whatever. You, yeah. know, you know what I mean? So yeah. if, if they think one thing's misinterpreted, they'll write it in an article. But yet yeah. you, could, you could publish a book on all the details I had correct and yet nothing, nothing. So yeah, it's weird. Yeah. It's interesting. I know it is. You yeah. know, it, it's got to be hard, Donna, to feel, uh, I don't even know, it, is ignored the right word? T to have so much right and not a blip on the radar. I just, I can't get over it. It's interesting. And you know what? It's good for people to see. Because when they, when they try to say, oh, there's no psychics and no psychic ever solved a case. Now you know what happens to psychics. They get yeah. no credit, right? Yeah. If I had said all hole. that, if I had said all that stuff, they would have accused me of being present at the crime. Yes, right? they would have. If, if I didn't say I'm a psychic and this is what I'm receiving, because right. nobody would have that many details. So, right. yeah. Um, 
Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Donna. Oh, I just kind of feel though, like it's up to the spirit guides and then, you know, yes, I, I don't know what to do. I did the best I can. So that's all I can do. It, it isn't what's annoying though, is what Vanity Fair did. It's like, oh, I know, thing. you know, that was they, so they didn't wrong. ask my opinion. They didn't ask yeah. for feedback. They didn't. I don't even know that the person even listened to my reading. So they probably didn't. Honestly, mm -mm. no. So they're working for a very elite class of people. Mainstream yeah. media is totally threatened by YouTube. YouTube. Yes, they are. YouTube's they, they tried to. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. It's absolutely uh -huh. crazy. And it, they'll do p things to discredit people. And, you know, yeah. I, I think it's a good example for anybody watching. Yes. About, you know, what mainstream doesn't cover. Yet mm -hmm. they, all those people at that level of society are using psychics. All of them are, all of them, right. you know, right. almost all of them. And, and learning right. that those skills themselves, even, you know, when they're in college and things like that, but then they want to smear someone they can't control, you know, yeah. they can't control the YouTubers from going and doing research and interviewing people. And, yes. then, and then they try to always get the... Do you notice on every case they try to get the um, victim's family to smear YouTubers? They're like, aren't mm -hmm. these YouTubers spreading misinformation? They're so annoying. And, yeah. Yeah. They even Dylan rounds just every Snap case faces. I notice they try to get the parents to say something and then they put it on TV how bad the YouTubers are, you know? And it's like, no. no. Mm -mm. You know, I've watched. Oh, what? No, no. Go ahead. Please. I just I was saying I've watched some mainstream media outlets get gossip, old gossip out yeah. of Facebook groups presented as news. And then the next mainstream media that picks it up will just refer to the first one so they don't mm -hmm. have legal liability. And it spreads around the mainstream media. You right. know, so they're they are literally yeah. no better than the YouTubers. At oh, all. I know. And even if it's a bullshit story, excuse my friend, even if well, it's yeah, a bullshit yeah. story. They don't care. They don't care because by the time the trial happens, everyone will have forgot and their mm -hmm. newscast will be buried by then. Yeah. yeah. You're a hundred percent right. I want to tell you real quick while we're on the subject of psychics in general, there is a psychic out of the UK that found the body of Nicole. I think it's Nicola Bully or is it right. Nicole Bully? Nicole, yeah. Nicola. Nicola. Yeah, Nicola Bully. Bully. Mm -hmm. And before that, maybe two years before that, had found a missing person, a missing 19-year-old. So you cannot tell me this ability is not real because I've witnessed it with you and I've right. witnessed it with other people like on TV. It's just not. Nice. Yeah. It and really he, he went and found her. And yes. they had to put it because he's the one who found her remains. Yes. So. It's, it's truly incredible. Yeah. Anyway, um, shall we get into the first part of what I want to talk about tonight. And that being, I don't think it's come out really publicly. I don't think it's been confirmed publicly, but Donna, back in January, Jan when did you do your Xana reading, Donna? Was that in December or January? Was, I think it was January 3rd. Okay. That's what I thought. I just want to make sure. Because I didn't know if when you isolated that pool story clip and then i uploaded that I, okay so in, in the xana reading okay um the people actually knew they were friends with uh xana and maddie and mm -hmm. um but when it came turn xana pulling back kaylee went in my face and then i was trying to like go around her to get connected with maddie but kaylee was just like front and center, you know how Tylee was just front and center. Yes. I have something to tell you. This is important. You need to listen to me. Right. You know, so, so the part that Kaylee puts through is like crucial and I, it, it right. will end up, you know, I'm hopefully they'll find something there, but it is related. It's to check all this. Out. I really do. And to catch everybody up on what we're talking about, just to speed you up on it. So in January, Donna did a, a reading on Xana, Xana's friend was on the phone with Donna and Donna started to see that there was a very important pool party that Kaylee went to and that this pool party had possibly everything to do with her murder. Is that right, Donna? Well, potentially. I don't know everything to do with her murder, but yeah. on the periphery, there is a relationship. Okay. I would the say background, that. 
it meant there, something. there's some it. connection, some relationship, something happened that upset Kaylee. Okay. Right. Yeah. And it's somehow related. So it's not okay. like everything to do with, but it's peripherally, okay. there is a connection there. Good. I'm glad you clarified. So then check this out. Long crime about, well, let me tell you the date. Hold on. I could tell you right now. It was three months ago, but what was the specific date? March 15th, 2023, Long Crime puts out a story about Brian Koberger. It is titled Brian Koberger's Life Under the Radar, Walking the Footsteps, excuse me, Walking in the Footsteps of Idaho Student Murder Suspect. In that video, what you will see, and I'm going to play it here in a moment, is that a person who is a neighbor of Brian Koberger invited him to a pool party. Brian accepted the invitation. He went there and there was a sleuth online that dialed in the situation so well that it's believed very possibly that was the pool party he may have met Kaylee at. Kaylee, and do you think Maddie as well, or it's Kaylee? He, he might have even met Einan there. Okay. We should call, I should call Einan on the phone. <laughs> and really ask him. Oh my God. Hi. He went mm -hmm. in and out. Okay. It's a I'm common gonna... theme in Koberger's past, leaving behind little clues about his isolated personality. Multiple people who knew Koberger tell us he was strange, but hardly memorable. Uh, he was kind of awkward, uh, but I feel like you can't just write someone off as being crazy just because they're a little awkward, you know? Just months after his graduation from DeSales, Koberger moved across the country to Washington to begin his PhD studies in criminal justice at Washington State University. It's crazy because like literally like days after these murders happened, he brought it up when I saw him in the hallway. Just across the hall from Coburg. As Coburger's dad approached him early on. The dad was like wanting to introduce me to Brian and he, he said something. I, I don't remember the exact like like where he used to describe him, but it was something that was like he he has a hard time making friends or he's kind of shy or something like 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 uh, like that. Martinez tells us Koberger kept up with the murders and even brought. I've been looking for a product like this my whole life. We were all putting it on, looking in the mirror, and we're like, oh my god, this. Them up as a topic of conversation. He was like, oh, did you hear about these murders that happened? And it was like so short after they actually happened. Like there was barely any news. So there wasn't much that I could have like read. So I was like, yeah, man, that's crazy. Yeah, of course I've heard about him. And he was like, yeah, it seems like they don't have any leads. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, there's not much about it. You know, there's nothing. I have no details really to say. <laughs> but yeah, and then he's like, yeah, it seems like they think it was a crime of passion. Those were the two things he said was that they had no leads and they think it was a crime of passion. On top of that, Koberger may have had a fascination with death or killing. One thing that stuck out was, uh, uh, it was kind of like on the subject of what it would take to like take someone's life. Like it was kind of like he was trying to see my, like my perspective on, well, I guess taking someone's life. After the pair were first introduced last summer, Martinez invited Koberger to a pool party, and they saw each other occasionally after that. At that same party, so July eighth, July eighth is the pool party. It sounds like socially awkward um, and kind of hard with, if I remember correctly. Um, but besides that, he mainly just stood to the side and was really observant. And, and so much so that based on that one small interaction, he you know knew exactly who I was maybe a month or so later when I saw him on that hike. When they crossed paths again, Cartwright says it was strange how quickly Koberger recognized him. It was really weird how he approached me and, and the people that I was with because he acted kind of like we were best friends or it, it was like a reunion or something and he was really excited to see us and I had no idea really who he was right at that second. Those two small interactions proved important enough for Cartwright to be interviewed by the FBI after Koberger's arrest. I did speak to the FBI at, at one point. I, I do believe that they spoke to a lot of people that were at that party. Um, it may be, be because that was one of his very first times, if not his, his first time in Moscow. Martinez and his wife were also interviewed by the FBI. He tells us his wife always felt something was off with the now suspected murderer. 
didn't have a good feeling about him because every time I, I would tell her, like, I'm going to invite Brian, you know, because he didn't have any friends. And I was trying to bring him out and maybe meet people he can, you know, relate to. But she was always like, no, please don't. Like, <laughs> she, there was just something about him that she, she, didn't, she didn't like. In recalling their conversations after Koberger's arrest, some key points stick out. I guess looking back, it's kind of funny because he was talking about how... Was he? he was talking about a genealogy because I was I was talking about the 23 and me because my sister had just did all that and then he brought up something similar in his studies that had to do with like being able to catch criminals because of their relatives DNA which is I guess how he got caught up in his mix. The probable cause affidavit released after Koberger's arrest revealed a knife sheath was left behind at the crime scene containing a single source of male DNA. When compared with DNA recovered from the trash at Koberger's parents' home, it proved to be a near perfect match. When the FBI interviewed Martinez, they asked whether he had ever seen Koberger with a similar weapon. They just asked about like if I if he had a knife on him or anything like that. If I ever noticed him with a knife. You know, I didn't. He never had anything on him like that. When Thanksgiving approached less than two weeks after the murders, Moscow police announced their investigation would continue through the holiday. I want to assure you, first off, that the loss of Zanna, Kaylee, Madison, and Ethan remains the highest priority for the Moscow Police Department. All right, so you saw the clip now, <clears throat> excuse me, of the law and crime episode or video about this pool party. Now I want you to see what Donna said. Um, so this is cut out from the reading I did with Zana Kernodal's friend. Really strong this this whole pool party thing. Um, and so I'm trying not to resist her showing me that. It's a sick feeling. You know what? Probably some of the other um, girls that went down there with her might know. Uh, you know, I think that would probably be true. They might know of some incident, and I do got chill on my leg. It's about that. They might know of some incident that occurred that Kaylee was upset about. And, you know, I don't know if it was her boyfriend. I don't know if it was another guy. I don't know who the guy is. Um, but something happened there. And um, it really bothered Kaylee a lot. So I think the other young ladies who were there with her will know. And I got a big chill on my leg. Okay. And it feels like that that person could be peripherally related to all this. All right. So I don't know what it is. Um, I'll just, um, but they will know, you know, they'll hear this and they'll know. And probably they might want to tell the police. They might, because they, it would be something that they would have written off as totally, completely unrelated to all this, but, it, but it is related. It's related. Um, I'm not the one to even judge like, was this guy there? I, I, I don't have, I have a feeling it's like a different guy. Um, but you know, if they said, if suddenly we hear in the news, like, Oh, he happened to be there. Um, then, 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 then that's what it is. But if it's, if, if we, it, the friends will know, that's all I know. The friends will know. Bingo, Donna, you said it right there. You said if it comes out in the news, that was that. I think I think this is right. I think you're right. Yeah, and actually, um, Nancy Grace, like um, on the around the 14th of January, so about 10 days after I put up that reading, yeah. she was knocking on doors, and she's the one who first knocked on the door of that neighbor, and the neighbor told her about the pool party. So it came out just over a week after I had uploaded that. Okay, and. and what they're um okay. sorry go ahead what they're not hearing is um in there it also talks about kaylee showing me some money folded up yep giving someone some money so 
And then the other thing she talked about was breathing fire. Okay. And so I was saying, um, she's showing me breathing fire. And I said, like, you guys, you know, you know, the people that put their stuff in their mouth and breathe fire. And her friend said, oh, she was like, a, but it wasn't her friend. It was Xana's friend. She said, oh, right. she was known like a spitfire. But then other people pointed out that Ainan spits fire. So it's like, I wanted to ask him if he was at the pool party. Oh, man, that's pretty interesting, huh? Yeah, that could, I mean, that could be a connection right there. I don't know, though. I don't know exactly what the connection is, but I know there's some peripheral involvement there. Right. When you were doing this read with Xana's friend, what do you think the money exchange meant? Was there any feeling you got about that? In Maybe general? drugs. Okay. Okay. Pot or something like so, something. Something. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. I mean, that's kind of what I figured because I know that's yeah. kind of how I mean, it, it was like a f money folded in half. Right. Um, that's kind of what I thought, but I didn't like try to push it, you know, could, yep. could be, could be anything. So I'm not making an accusation, but you know, right. And then, you know what I want to show, let me get into these photos real quick. We can show how big this pool area was real quick. Hold on. Okay, first of all, this is the screenshot. Hopefully you guys can see on the screen. Um, this is the exchange between his buddy, Christian, I believe. It, was that his name, Christian? Is that right? Christ Christian is one of them, yeah. Okay, Christian. So it says, here's the address to where the pool party is. Starts at 2, but me and Gabby are going to get there early to help my buddy move some DJ stuff. So the DJ guy was the guy with the longer hair. Was his name Nick, Donna? Is that right? Or am uh, I remembering? Something I don't like remember off the top of my okay. head. Okay. So then Brian responds, thanks. I have to run and get trunks. Christian replies, right on, dude. Then Brian says, that pool party was an interesting experience. Thanks for the invite. Very interesting, huh? Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. So there's something there. I, I believe so, Donna. I absolutely believe so. Now, I want to show you. I came across a picture today. I really hope I added it like I think I did. And I might not have. I don't think there, I have. The Grove right there. Yeah, here we go. Awesome. Okay. That is the possible location for this pool party. Now, Donna, do you remember exactly how it was figured out that it was this one? If you don't, I've got the message and I can read it off the, the post that the gal made. Do you want me to do that? Um, or do you? Well, I funny? think the one person wants her privacy. I can tell. Um, oh, yeah, we won't say her name. Yeah. So I have a Facebook group. It's under my name of my channel, Psychic Reverend Donna Serafina. It's a discussion group if you're interested. But someone in there was looking through the the DJs and uh, then his girlfriend's Instagram and found photos of this around that time period. But so we we haven't confirmed that that's it, but it's potentially yeah. it. And this place it's called the Grove. They took down all their photos for 2022 as well. So that's also interesting. And nice. um, this is 1.25 miles from Kaylee's from the King Street house. Mm -hmm. So did they did they publicly say the uh, pool party was in Moscow? They didn't specify. No, mm -mm. I, I heard that somewhere, too. So so it's possible. It's okay. possible we that's that we're not trying to claim because we don't know, but somebody in the group kind of tracked that down as a, the likely right. place. I tried to get a confirmation and I have not heard back from the two DJs. Okay. The, the neighbor and his friend. So no response, just no. And it's probably because of the investigation. That's my guess. They're like not going to talk about it. They were probably sworn to not talk about it, right? I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. You know, okay. Okay. either way, they they either that or they don't feel like answering people anymore. I don't know. Okay. Is it OK, Donna, if we if we delve a little bit back into what you talked about in your first read on? Oh, sure. Right. Sure. Okay. OK, let me click out of this real quick so we can 
kind of get a little personal. I know it's it's hard to relive because it is traumatized. It's very traumatizing um, to the people in the audience. This is not an easy thing that Donna does, but she does it really well. And I feel like she is a, in my opinion, a national treasure for how she's able to do what she does. It's truly incredible. Um, with Brian Koberger, so when you see him now, do you feel that that's the person that you saw psychically? And if so, what is it about him that says, this has to be the guy? Is it the height? Is it the look? Um, what is it? It's, um, I believe, so you got to have the, the, whatever, the disclaimer for psychics or whatever, right. but I believe 100% that they have the right guy. Like, there's no doubt in my mind. And yeah. I, for me, it's the energy I get off him. Yes. And um, so, th so they had me, one, I saw him talking to who is most likely Kaylee. Because yeah. I, I didn't know who they were at the time. And I said, it's the girl with the rounder face. I know. Yeah. And I believe that was in Friendship Square. I d I'm not 100% sure, but they showed me where benches surround a tree. Okay. And, you know, at one point they were showing me across to where the food truck was. So that's why I think it's Friendship Square. And um, they were showing me the killer. So first he was walking along, talking to her, and then she sat down on a bench. She wasn't afraid of him, but she wasn't interested in him at all. And I said, mm -hmm. he's six feet tall. He's 30 years old or around 30 years old. Um, he has brunette hair. It's curly on top. Yeah. And um, he was wearing a black hoodie and um, she wasn't interested in him in, at all. Okay. And then um, when they had me in front of the house, they, I said, now this is the same guy. This is the same guy that was talking to her. Mm -hmm. So, and when he was walking up the side of the house, so uh, he was walking up the side of the house. Then they, they took my consciousness, my spirit guides, they took my consciousness and attached it in his energy yeah. to his consciousness. And so they had me, so then he went in the back sliding door and the only thought that he had while I was connected to him was um, now I'm in, and now I'm in, right? Right. I'm in. Um, and I believe that uh, News Nation it has it wrong about the order of death. I think I think, I think all of them true. have it wrong about the order of death. I think um, it's they showed me him going to Zana and Ethan's room first. Right. Um, and people wonder, uh, one question people keep bringing up is how could he have done this in six minutes or 15 minutes? How long time frame? Um, I think it's about 15 minutes. Or, oh, or easy. A, a man can cross a room in 30 seconds. I don't know if people realize that. Try running across your room. It takes 30 seconds. I believe that Brian was getting up in the middle of the night. Remember his other neighbors uh, <laughs> said to the news that Brian gets up in the middle of the night and makes all this noise. She was saying yes. all this noise. I believe he was setting his alarm, getting up and training himself to be awake at that time and high functioning at that time and 100%. running around in a pattern so yes. that he would be ready to do what he was going to do. Because when I was connected to his brain, there was no more thinking um, other than his fantasy that was already there. Yeah. Excuse me, that they showed me. But there was no more thinking going on. It was doing. So yeah. it was something he had relived over and over and over and over. And it wasn't like he went in the room quietly and, oh, Ethan, are you awake? It was yeah. he burst in there and stabbed. You know, it was it was fast. And he was practiced, right? He was very practiced. I'm totally convinced that's what he was doing in the middle of the night when that neighbor was um, saying that he makes a bunch of noise in the middle of the night. Oh, I think so, too, Donna. And he also liked to go on these midnight jogs and stuff like that. So he was training his body to be alert and active at that time. And then he ran up the stairs. So it's like, and I said, he's, he's skipping the next obvious room. Like if you didn't know where you were going and you were just doing this random thing, but he purposely skipped the room that we know Dylan Mortensen had. And right. he went up the stairs and that whole thing um, happened very fast.
Yes. And then he stood there for a minute watching and he was ecstatic. He was, that wasn't really thoughts. It was just ecstasy. It was just like an explosion that seemed like it, the energy just went through the whole upstairs of, he was ecstatic at what he did. There was no I, remorse. There was no, Oh, should I done that? There was nothing. And so, and then I saw him come back down. See, I think he came back down and heard Zana crying and realized he left a witness and went back in and finished her off. And I think that's when Dylan looked out and saw him coming. And then Dylan says she saw him go out the back door. And in my reading, I also saw him go out the back door. But what I said in my reading was he he went out the back door and then he turned around and came back in. Right. Right. And then um, so that might have been when D Dylan was I mean, it's good. She locked her door or whatever. But right. then I saw him going down the stairs and, and he was sitting out the front. Right. Yeah. And a few uh, days after I had put that up or after he was caught, they said then uh, someone interviewed some neighbors and they said they did see that the front door was wide oh, was. open That's a and, fact. and they thought it was weird because it was so cold outside. That's a fact, Donna. It is a fact that he left that front door open. As a matter of fact, do you mind if I show you some quick things? I really, I've, I've wanted to share this for a little while now. There is so much debate online about the Reddit user inside looking being Brian Koberger or not. I really want to share these screenshots with you. And I want you to tell me if you think this sounds like what you saw psychically. Okay. Okay. How's that sound? Okay. Let me grab them because I just feel it's exactly what you've said. Mm -hmm. It makes so much sense that this is possible. Let me just. Could I, go. could I tell them something while you're doing oh, that? Please, real quick so I don't forget. Yeah. Sure. Um, another question I keep seeing coming up from different YouTubers is why did he leave the other two girls alive? And the answer to that is he gave himself an allotment of time. He, mm -hmm. that he was going to do this in. So he was practicing, you know, I'm doing this in X amount of time. And he actually had a desire. So when he was leaving, he wanted to go kill the other ones. He mm -hmm. had a desire to go kill the other. It wasn't, he didn't spare them. He didn't feel sorry for them. He wanted to go kill them. Yeah. But he had used his allotted amount of time where he, I guess, decided that would be safe to do. So I just wanted to make sure people know that. Yeah, most definitely. Okay, Donna, I'm going to read. I believe this. I can't narrow when this specific screenshot's from because I didn't take it, but I found it on Google Images as I was searching through Inside Looking. And it, so somebody asked in Reddit, in the Moscow Murders Reddit, or subreddit, excuse me, um, where is the dog kept in the house? I haven't figured out that piece yet. As they said, the dog didn't impact the scene. So inside looking says, not sure, maybe kept in Kaylee's room, which is kind of weird, right? Because that's yeah. exactly where the dog was kept, but we didn't know that for a little while. I don't even think we knew that until maybe middle of December, you know, possibly, right. possibly middle of December. Okay. This one, I cannot guarantee is from Brian. But what happened is when Brian, when Brian Koberger was arrested at his parents' house in the Poconos, they quickly, whoever was going on to his tech and stuff, quickly removed his Reddit accounts and a lot of his social media accounts. What was left behind was what here. This outlook. So it's just deleted in the little bars. But here it says something that I think. Sounds exactly like what, like what we heard shortly after he was arrested. Let me read it. It says, the lack of stories coming from locals, college students, friends, etc. Typically in a murder investigation, people talk to media fondly about the victims. But nobody's talking because the town is terrified. And maybe that was the motive. Hey, I'll show all of you that they don't matter and I do. I think when they snatch this guy up, it's going to be someone who lives very close by, who has watched the house for more than a year. I don't believe it's a college student, druggie, or anyone who was close to them. To me, it's a stalker, lurker, peeping creep, 
who saw this moment to finally carry out his plan. Neighbors have commented in newspaper stories about how unusually quiet it was on the street that night. Unusually so. I think he's been watching the goings-on for more than a year. He's gone through each season, winter, spring, summer, fall. Late at night, I would bet he has practiced his entry, exit, timed what his attack would take, and in each season, he has been there. He craves to be part of the world, but he knows he never will be. He's been watching them move in, move out, have parties, laugh, play music, flirt with boys. He sees the house as the epicenter and reflection of what, hold on, I think it's back this way, of what, um, you see, as the, as he sees the house as the epicenter and reflection of that college life he never had. I think he moved there to place himself in the middle of things. Notice this. I think he moved there to place himself in the middle of things. Remember, Brian moved from Pennsylvania to Washington. So that kind of, that's about one of the main things that made me think it was possibly him. Anyway, we'll carry on. He might be going to work with an extra pep in his step. If I lived in Moscow, Idaho, I'd be looking for that odd duck guy who seems more vocal at work, a little happier, a little more energetic, and happier with himself. I think he's a real loner, and suddenly he has had a slight personality change. And I think he's killed before. Man, it's when a I good saw assessment. Him, if it's not him, it's a good assessment. It's a very good assessment if it's not him. That's yeah, it's sure. a good profiler, the person who wrote yes, it. Yes, it's a very well a profiler. Yeah, we can't guarantee that was him. Absolutely not. But it sure, like there was things about it. I go, man, this sounds just like what we heard in the news shortly after he was arrested, you know, yeah. about, about him going to work. He was a little happier. He was a little mm -hmm. more talkative. I was like, oh, that sounds just so familiar. And okay. he, he um, his motive was he hates these little bitches. Or, yes. He, he hates these little bitches that i yeah. mean it's in the first reading it, it was right. just an out and out hatred for what he cannot have for sure what he cannot have mm -hmm. yeah uh let's see so here where was ethan found inside looking in bed like he's just very so he's familiar. the only one who knew because everyone at that time was saying ethan's in the kitchen ethan's in the yes. living room ethan's in the bathroom yes donna exactly i truly think this the only thing that makes me think maybe this isn't him uh -huh. is he says that the murders happen between like three and three thirty-five. so unless Unless the cop, like the detectives and stuff, got the timeline off, and maybe Xana's phone was on repeat, like on TikTok, uh -huh. the time is off. That's the only thing that Inside Looking has gotten wrong that I know of. Unless somebody else in the audience, you know, who watches this later might know. Like, that's the only thing I can say he 100% got wrong. But check this one out. Um, Let's see. I thought so too, but looking again, I think they just dusted the handle. He's saying outside handle taken off for DNA, inside handle not, perp open door and never shut it. Just like you said, well, he, he knew, went out yeah. the front. He knew. Do you know when that was? Do you remember? I wish I knew. It just doesn't say when these screenshots are from. I, I can't they even tell you. after he got arrested, right? Oh yes, they, they stopped. It stopped. As a matter of fact, I want to say it was the evening of the 29th and he was arrested on the 30th from what I remember, from what I remember. That's what I understand to be. Yeah. Perp open door and never shut it. And to use the word yeah. perp. Right. Know. Right. You don't usually right. use that word perp unless you're studying criminology or something like that. Yeah. That's you know, so or true. you're a cop or something. Yes. Here's another one. So somebody says two killers, one knife. He says one killer, one knife. <laughs> yeah. So I was only shown one person inside the house. But remember, right. I still don't know about this red-haired guy outside. I don't know if it's indicative oh, of yeah. Brian and the and his hair or if it's a whole separate person yeah. that happened to kind of see something, not necessarily guilty in the death, but that happened to see. Like, we'll have to probably wait till the trial to find out. Well, Donna, I want to show you this picture. Let me okay. let me grab it, and then I'm going to put it on that the screen so everybody can see it. His hair, 
look so red in this photo. You got to see it. Hold on. <clears throat> Let me make sure it added. Okay, it shows it added. Let's go back out. I almost just like flipped out. It was so red. Hold on. Is it added? Let me refresh just a sec. There he is. Okay. You got to see this. Look at this hair, guys. That hair looks so red. It's, Donna, getting, re it's getting redder. And the pictures when he was a teenager, it was reddish. It was actually yes. reddish. Yes. Um, Do you see that, though? I mean, that is some... That's red hair. That's Auburnish hair to me. To me. Yeah. And if he was, and when he was in the house, when they were showing him me in the house, I said, "Hey, wait, where's the red-haired guy?" And then I said, yes. "Does this guy put dye in his hair to make it less red?" So right. that's why I don't really know what's up with seeing the red-haired guy outside. If it's right. indicative of 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 something, maybe two sides to his personality, or I don't know. Could it be a witness that maybe? It could be a witness. It absolutely could be a witness. It could be that somebody was kind of peeping on the girls or kind of looking in their house and kind of saw him go. And it could be a witness that they're keeping secret until the trial. That's why, like, I don't know. So it's not psychic of me to say that. I'm just saying I, I don't know. Right. But I saw a red haired guy go up to the house and then I see the brown haired guy go in the house. So right. it'll be interesting when that comes to play to find out oh it's going to be really interesting because there is supposedly an informant that wants to stay out of this as much as possible i think that came out in the news uh probably february something like that oh really and i figured it could be his sister right Every, you know because we we saw yeah. the, i think it was the dateline episode where supposedly she was very suspicious of her brother i mean if that's even yeah. true but i've never yeah. seen dateline put out total trash information of you um, no, but they all kind of share information. And, okay. and so as long as they can say they picked it up here, okay, you know, they picked it up, you know, people picked it up from news nation and then mm -hmm. Dateline picked it up from people. And then, so then right. they've kind of shifted responsibility and that information was actually in one of the Facebook groups starting in February about the sister being suspicious. Okay. So it's kind of it, interesting it's how that all works. It yeah, kinda, that's that's interesting timing for sure. It kind of goes around the same way things go around on the YouTube with the YouTubers, you know, it's absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of goes round Robin like news. Yeah. And then, and then in the that. end, uh, you kind of see at the trial because everybody right now is having to guess a lot of things. It is. I know. How do you feel about the gag order? Do you wish they would just kind of do away and with it and just let the news come out or keep it the way it well, is? I thought if you look at the Lori Vallow trial as an example, mm -hmm. honestly, I, I don't, I mean, she's guilty, but I don't know that she got a fair trial. If oh. the juror is his wife, he says his wife was following the story the whole time. So mm -hmm. they're sitting there watching, you know, Netflix, which there was some inaccuracies in that. Mm -hmm. And um, in fact, probably t at least 10 major things. But if oh. people are watching that and then they believe because it's on Netflix, it's legitimate and true. Right. Um, then and then then he goes into the jury. And if all of them, you know, how, how would they ever find a juror that didn't even know about sure. that case? Because it's so overexploited. Yeah, you know? you're right. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. So Real quick, they, they me... kind of have to have it. Yeah. To protect you know, yes, I would love to know. I would oh, love yeah. to know, but y y you do need a fair trial, especially if you're going to execute somebody. Oh, absolutely. That just puts a layer of ser seriousness on the whole case in general. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's, that's serious. Let me real quick get to this. Thank you so much, Steve M., for the super sticker. Thank you. And let's see. How do um Hold on. Angel D, thank you so much for the $5 super sticker. I was sure they mentioned an informant and one of Ellie said bombshell when this comes to trial allegedly, but I can't find it now around February. Yes, I remember. I remember Angel. I totally remember that. Yeah. Very interesting. You know, there's there's another question I have for you, Donna, while, while, while we have you here to mm -hmm. talk about this. When you did your read on him, 
you saw him hunting. Do you mm -hmm. think that this could have been the whole animal aspect? Could that be why you saw him hunting? He did go hunting with his father. Did you oh, know I that? No, I didn't know him that. Him and his father used to go hunting all the time. They might even have a hunting cabin. I didn't know that. Wow. And then there's Jack Showalter oh. that has red okay. hair. You know, Jack right. Showalter, remember Hoodie Boy? Hoodie oh, yeah. Guy or whatever? I can't and, forget. Yeah. And okay, so he lived across the street. So could he have been coming home and seen the guy go in the house? And and like he went to his family's he went to his family's hunting cabin that night. That's his alibi. So there's okay. something I haven't been able to let go about that. I don't I'm not saying he has any part in this or any guilt. Maybe he was walking by and saw the guy. You know, maybe he was walking home and saw the guy. I like don't know. Perhaps. But it is kind of weird that he went to his family's hunting cabin too. But yeah, so Brian, by the time he was arrested, I, I don't think he had a Facebook anymore, but yeah. it has come out that him and his father used to go hunting when he was a teenager. I didn't know that, Donna. I thought I kept up with all this. I didn't know that. I didn't. No, and I tried to look up on the background checker um, okay. to look for a cabin in Coburg's name. Okay. Um, but sometimes cabins aren't listed they're harder to find sometimes they're in a family trust and things like that okay gotcha the reason i ask about the animals is there's some more details that that i found very interesting again you know this is speculation we're not saying this is confirmed yeah. i'm not saying this is confirmed but this is us this is how we would talk if you guys weren't here we just talk about it oh all. yeah but Even you guys more. are there and you get to watch us talk it out. So I'm going to share yeah. this with you, Donna. This is a very interesting connection someone makes about uh -huh. the animal stuff that was going on in Moscow. And let me just make sure I get the right one. Okay. Why am I not seeing it? Maybe I'll just read it. Let me go through this real quick. I added all this stuff to my Google thing. Oh, okay, here it is. Thank goodness. Okay. I want to find the best shot of it. I don't know. Okay, just a sec, Donna. I want to read this to you real quick. Is that your pup? Yeah, I locked them behind the. Um, oh, I bet they're. So, <laughs> I bet they're having a hard time. They want to be with you, I'm sure. They want to be on my lap all the time. Oh gosh, I can imagine. Okay. So there was somebody on on Reddit. There's there's actually a lot of interesting information on Reddit. But so there's a person on Reddit who started looking into the bizarre things that happen with animals. They felt that it seemed to really pick up in the month of June. Okay, here let's. Oh, which is when is, he moved there, right? Exactly. Now this this came out. This what we're looking at right here in this screenshot is before we knew that Brian Koberger was the killer. Um, I took these screenshots on June fifth, so this is this was well before he was arrested. Uh, it says I believe he was escalating, gearing up, maybe even trying to suppress urges. That is entirely possible. Maybe cats weren't enough. Maybe a rabbit and a dog weren't enough. Who is to know? What is in the mind of someone who does these sayings? I gathered the info from missing animal pages online and on Facebook for that area. Now, what it is, is you will see. So in June, June 23rd, which, gosh, coincidentally, that's the day that the search warrant. Uh, remember how the big tech, uh, the search warrant was pulling info from big tech, like Snapchat, whatever. The date was 623. I think it was August 1st. Mm -hmm. If I remember. It, it, correctly. Yeah. The Snapchat warrant that they just put out a couple of weeks ago yeah. covered the date of the pool party. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Really weird. So if you notice here, it says a cat. Then it, uh, so on 623, 22, something happened to a cat. 
seven twenty five twenty twenty two. Something happened to a cat, and I believe these are deaths from what I remember because he color coded them here. But August fifteenth, twenty twenty two, cat. August twentieth, twenty twenty two. So it really ramps up from June on. Coincidentally, that's when Brian moved to to Pullman, Washington. Now, could it be a happenstance? You know, just to just happened. Yeah, sure. It could no connection. Yeah, maybe. But I thought that timing was crazy, especially because in October, it really, the, the whole scalping and then the dog getting skinned and filleted, buddy. I know, right? Right? Now we have to keep in mind that was just on the heels of that Dahmer documentary that came out. And I still like, I still think that that Dahmer documentary could have very well convinced a person who was already on the fringes of society in a way, right? And is thinking right. he knew he wasn't normal. He knew he wasn't normal from the vi visual snow. Right, right. He knew he wasn't normal when he was a teenager. He knew Correct. something was wrong. He knew there was something wrong. Now, seeing a movie like Dahmer, or sorry, a series like Dahmer, where mm -hmm. it, in a way even dramatizes it and kind of glamorizes it. Because right. in, the final, in the final episodes, it's like he's famous. Dahmer yeah. was larger than life. He's getting fan mail. He's getting money and cards. Like he's the he's the big cheese, you know. And right, I thought, man, somebody who's a little unsteady, a little off, they could look at this and be like, "That's how I become somebody." I've been Absolutely. saying this. I've been saying this. Absolutely, like December, or January. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I now mean, there's I thought, almost something to be said for making it against the law to like to even talk about them after they get convicted like give them a number and don't give them a name anymore don't, 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 you know only write stuff about the victims and you yes. know but they can't really do that but still you're right 100 percent. it glamorizes it it would turn okay. someone like brian on or you know yeah. somebody else inclined that way and and right. trigger them to to go um do the same thing right so i look at those dates and i'm going okay that's from june to october and then the dog gets scalped and, and filleted and stuff. And that's right after that Dahmer documentary thing comes out or series. I don't know. And it could, again, it could be all just a coincidence, and, right? And but, Jack Showalter, do you know, do you know when he um, killed the coyotes and put them on the fraternity lawn? I didn't know Showalter was in on that. Showalter did that. That's why he got kicked out of the fraternity. I didn't, as I wasn't privy to all that drama about the fraternity. I kind of just didn't engage. So please inform us. I, I didn't know. Uh, okay. So somebody put some dead coyotes on a sorority at one point. I, I don't know that. if he got caught or if he just okay. had to go clean it up. I'm not sure. But then later, so he had a hair trigger temper. That was one problem he had there. And then at the uh, fraternity. And then he he caught like seven coyotes, killed them, and put them on the lawn of I a different that. fraternity. Okay. And so they ki they kicked him out of his fraternity. So his parents had to go rent him an apartment, coincidentally in the same building, I believe, as Ainan. So he's Ainan's neighbor. Interesting. You know, so you could tell how all these people may have crossed paths. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a small world for sure. Mm-hmm. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I, that's crazy still about the coyotes thing. The dog, oh, I know. The, buddy, the dog. It's just like, what? I don't understand people just killing for fun instead of killing for food, you know? And, and that's and like, like Barry, right? He kills for fun. Yeah. But, but Jack kills for fun and then drags them home and puts them on someone else's lawn. So he's doing that for some kind of shock value. Right. Yeah, that's, that's, so that's another that's, level. That's twisted to me. See, and with, with, um, if there's a lot of coyotes around there, I don't know if there is, but if there's a lot of coyotes around there, they, they could kill cats. So I'm not sure when their hunting season is like when they give birth in the spring, if they're hunting for their children, but they kill cats. Cause okay. I so used to manage some apartments on a canyon and I mean, they killed like nine cats within a month. I had okay. to go put like notices on doors. So, so we don't know for sure if that was Brian, but we do know that Jack went and okay. killed a bunch of coyotes and put them on the fraternity. That is 
bizarre to me. Yeah. It so really, it would be real interesting when the trial happens to for see sure. these people and if they're any, you know, play any part. And I'm, again, not accusing him of being involved in the murder or anything right. like that. Yeah. It, it could be that he was walking by and saw something. I don't know, though. I think there's going to be a witness here, Donna, because for it to come out that there was like an informant, there's there's somebody in the background who knows who knew something. Right. There has to be. Right. There has to be. Yeah. In fact, that could have bridged the gap between when they knew about the vehicle and when they actually went full on, you know, hard into Brian Koberger, which I think right. was what, 20 days between that time frame? Or some, I mean, something like that. When so what? Of, oh, when they when they released about the white car? Yes. So when like they arrested the him on car, December. To when they, the white car to when they actually arrested him. Like Yeah, and remember between. everyone going on and on about every white car and tracking down oh every owner God. and stuff like that? It was a never-ending story. Every white car in America. So they arrested on, on December 29th, but on the 28th, I was getting these premonitions of his mother being murdered. I mean, it was so scary. It was so Not real. Really. Like this woman was in so much danger if she okay. were to confront him because he was in a killing mode still. He it was like an all for nothing or something kind of feeling. Right. He would have he stabbed her if she had like confronted him. Donna, here's what I think is so interesting. And I don't know if anybody else is truly zeroed in on this connection in your read, but when you said that like his parents know that he's nuts yeah, and then he's like, being found at his parents' house, that was another very validating thing. I'm like, the yeah, next night, yeah. Like the right. next night, the next night he was, yeah, arrested at his parents'. I was like, thank yeah. God, man, that woman was in danger because they're showing yeah. me that this is a very likely potential here. Yeah, because you said like this guy's crazy. Mom and dad. I think you said mom knows it. Mom knows yeah. that her son is off. Yeah. Yeah. And then for it to be the exact dynamic you said, I thought that was really crazy. But, you know, it didn't even connect in my mind immediately. It took some time. And then I was like, wait, she totally talked about the mom knowing and him yeah. being with the parents. Yeah. And I feel sorry for her. Like if she sees this, you know, yes. I, I, you I could try so all you want to get help for your kid. It's super hard and there's a limit to what you can do. Oh, and so once they're over 18, you can't, you can't do anything. It's, it's really hard even when they're not 18 and we don't know, they may have try, taken him to doctors trying right. to get some help. And they, yes. cause they were showing me there was structurally something different about his brain, why he likes to do what he did. And you said, it was very interesting. You said, like, I thought that Lori Vallow was like the worst and he was so much worse than Lori Vallow. You said something like that to me. When yeah, his energy, his energy. So I was okay. also connected with the brain of Lori Vallow when she was murdering her children mm -hmm. and when she was murdering Charles or having Alex murder Charles. Mm -hmm. But, um, and that was crazy. It was crazy. Yeah. But Koberger was a thousand times more intense. It was so intense that, I mean, for months, I kind of like felt like I'd been gutted or something like interesting. Um, just insane. And not, not that his energy is insane, but just the level of ferociousness. It was like animal. It was like animal. Once he was in, it, he, he, there wasn't thinking. It wasn't like, oh, okay, should I do this? It was just like, boom, boom, boom. Like, you know, wow. Like automated. Right. Really, really intense, really intense. And he felt good about it. So there was something specifically you said about blood and his arousal to the sight of it. Yeah, And I found it really odd when on that search warrant, I can't remember what line it was on, but that his mattress and his pillow had blood on it. I know. That was the first thing I thought of was you and what you had said about it. And for those in the audience that are wondering, like, what are they even talking about? Donna had seen that he, he would become very aroused to the blood, blood. in sight. And he even had like a little jar of it that you saw, Donna. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And um. And, and so that means when he got home, he didn't go straight to the shower. He laid in bed first. Oh. 
likely because he's got he's got blood in his hair or and some part so there's blood on a sheet and blood on a pillow right yeah but see i i figured that could be from him doing that to himself yeah in the bed, in the bed. yeah yeah. You know what I'm saying? They, sh like, they showed him just putting a little bit. So so okay. I think some people think I think he covered himself. No, he put a little bit on his private and and um instantly aroused and and doing was, doing it. Yeah, when I saw that, yeah. I was like, "Oh my gosh, that reminds me so much of what Donna had said." And who knows who's blood that even is, you know, like in the bed, but that was the first thing I thought of. And again, mm -hmm. anybody in the audience that's like, oh, these girls are crazy. They're insane what they're talking about. I want you to go watch my last video before the one I put out yesterday of mm -hmm. Donna with the Lori Vallow case. Please, I implore you, go watch that. Yeah. Go watch that. You want yeah. to you want to second guess how keen she is with the details? Like it's unreal. Yeah. She gets the details, the nitty gritty details. It's crazy. Very detailed, very detailed because the spirit guides take my consciousness. So at some point during a reading, I might just be starting to connect and then they might be showing me things yeah. like I'm watching them. Now they have me following them downtown. Right. And um, and then all of a sudden they take my full consciousness and the spirit guides are in control of my consciousness when they attach it. And from then on, I'm seeing everything in 3D. So yeah, it's like, so weird. it's a little translucent. So it's not like you're in the physical room and I see what they show me. So it's like, they only showed me one person in the house. They only showed me who I believe to be Brian in the house. Yeah. Um, and they, they only show, so I don't see the whole room. I see what they show me, but okay. it still is like 3D. And so every time he was stabbing someone, they would disconnect my brain and I'd be standing about four feet behind him. Like, so when he was in Xana and Ethan's room, I was standing by the door okay. and, um, and I purposely stayed behind him. So I wasn't watching every stab wound um, just for my own. And then they had me back in his brain and it's like, I did see for some reason they wanted to, um, felt it was important for me to see what he did to Kaylee which her father confirmed within a week or two of me saying that him, About, him cutting her open and stuff. Yeah. I remember that. That was confirmed after you for sure. Yeah. And so they, they had me watch that and it, it like stayed with me for a long time. So, um, mostly I know too, when you're doing this, you can't make them not show you something. Or they'll try to smash it together. They'll try to find a way to show you anyway. But you can, mm -hmm. like, say, I can turn a light off. So when I did a subsequent reading of that Travis Juetten, where they thought, mm -hmm. wondering if it could be related, or right, I just couldn't handle watching another person being hurt that way. And so I kept the bedroom light off because oh. I didn't want to see. I can't make them stop doing what they're doing, but I can turn the light off or something like that. Like you, you have limited control. So when you, when you say you turn the bedroom light off, does that, so that would prevent you from seeing the full scope? Yeah. I just couldn't, time? I couldn't deal with it. Okay. So I can't always deal with it. Like, especially if I do one of these crimes, um, then it might be a while before I could handle doing another one. I can't just do them back to back to back because it, it, it does get traumatic that way to go into that energy. To see it to that level, you are in that energy of when it happened. Yes. You know, it and it's really you. intense energy. I believe it. I believe it. Yeah, yeah. you've described it before. Like it's, you sometimes would have to take a dip in the, the ocean just to feel a little more cleansed from the right. gravity, right? Yeah. Go, go to the ocean and go get a massage, go have lunch with some friends and just kick that energy off. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's so, it's so evil. It's got to be so evil. It's pure thank evil. You, thank you for, for what you do. I mean, from me, from all of us, because you really give such great insight into these cases. I'm glad to do it. Like when I saw, I, I saw this on the 18th. So it was five days after it happened. I saw it on my computer and it said someone went in and killed four college students. And I was just like, 
oh hell no (laughs) and i just bumped into my room i'm like go into my room and start praying and just like help me like you know and then that was the first reading and you know what's interesting Mm -hmm. is when i woke up all i remembered was bread that's all i remember i think i remembered one small thing besides that and it wasn't it was four days later when my dog was having babies and mm-hmm. uh, I, I figured there'd be an hour between peppies. And I thought, no, eh, I'll see what's on there. I didn't yeah. know anything was on there. So that was I, the first time you listened to it at that. Yeah, point. I was shocked. Oh, no. I was I was shocked myself. I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. All that information. And that's why I just ran out there, you know, and, and threw it up just in case it could help or whatever. Right. So right. and then sent a link to the police department. Right. And in the end, the the bread connection had everything to do with the European brand of bread. Is that right, Donna? Coburg? Right. So you can look them up on Wikipedia if anyone's interested. They have their own page. It's Coburg. Coburg Breads. It's spelled just like Coburger without the E-R. And it's Coburg Breads. It's the largest family-owned bakery in Europe. Oh, and they also supply the East Coast, which oh. is where Brian's from. So okay. if anyone in his family heard my reading and it's like Coburg breads, mm-hmm. you know, they might they might know that Coburg breads or maybe someone in the police or the FBI might know, you know, if they heard right. that or if he was already a suspect Coburg. And then I'm sitting there, you know, saying that. So mm-hmm. that's kind of how those clues work. And, li- and like I always tell people, like any clue could be a person, a place or thing, you know, like in the Kylie Rodney, a bear. Um, right. And the, I said, I'm seeing a bear. And then the teenagers wrote to me and they said, that means bring everything alcohol related. So but I'm seeing a bear walking. Oh. So so that's how the clues work. Yeah. And it's up to your interpretation. Right. Right. And so there's a difference between when I'm saying I'm seeing something, they're showing me something, and then I'm start going, maybe this, maybe that is like mm-hmm. I'm trying to figure it out. That makes yeah. so much sense. Real quick, I want to say uh, DC Primetime, thank you so much for the super sticker or super chat. Um, she says, Donna, can one individual have two energies? I, I think that that's possible, like if they had a split personality or something like that, but I've never encountered it. So, so okay. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. I, I mean, Brian ha- has, I was in his energy and the second I saw him, I was like, oh, there he is. There yeah. he is. Like, I mean, you saw me crying. I was scared when I uploaded that. I know they're on social media all the time. Like I knew the odds of him listening to that were extremely high. Oh, I and, think he did, Donna. I think he yeah. did. And I just, I ended up putting alarms on all my windows and Art. and sleeping with one eye open and, you know, yeah, protected. I was, I was up in the mountains, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago. The day I was getting a lot of these screenshots for the inside looking account and the deleted Reddit account. And um, I had come across one old Reddit page and it's and it. I don't know for sure if this was Brian and they're, you know, commenting, but it was something about, wow, this psychic reading is like exactly what happened. And I wondered if they were referencing you. They never said who they were referenced, like who who they were talking about. But I remember wondering I wonder if they're taught. I wonder if Brian saw your reading and was like, damn, that's exactly what happened. I mean, oh, you mean it was the inside looking account said that it it was a deleted account that could Uh have been one of his accounts. We just don't know. Yeah, they're always in there. Right. They're always they're always in there. And um, yeah, I was scared. I mean, I you don't even know how relieved I was when they caught him. That's oh, why I, was I started too. crying, just the relief from it. I felt relief too. I yeah. still feel relief. And, you know, I don't know what's going to happen in the future here because there is, um, there's just, right now it seems very unclear. He could end up, I don't even want to speak it into existence, but something could happen here is how I'm, I feel. I'm you- real disappointed in Ann Taylor. 
yeah. that she would ask for a trial date of 1122, which is the address of the house. Like, why would she oh, do that? Even if Brian wanted her to. Yeah, it's, it's, that's pure evil to me. That's pure evil. 100%. And, and I don't know what she's thinking. I, he deserves a fair trial, obviously, and mm -hmm. doing her job. But that's above and beyond her job to try to say we're going to start a trial on the 1122, which is the address right. of the house. Right. And funny you should say that, Donna, because let me show you the other thing I wanted to show you. Well, and, and everybody else here. So oh, yeah, this, he would kill. Yeah, this sorry. was the inside looking account. Gosh, and I know people are like, "Oh, we already said the inside looking was nothing. It had nothing to do with this." But just watch, okay? Please, just watch, people. December fifteenth. If I can zoom in, is it just me or does that look like Brian's nose and eyes, or an eye? Now I want you to look. By the thirty first, it ends up getting deleted. But if you look down here, he listed his birthday as November 22nd, 2022, which happens to be 1122, which happens to be the address. Oh, that's I interesting. That was, I thought that was really odd, right? So between December 15th and December 31st, he deleted his picture, which like I said, that really does look like his eye and nose. Who knows if it is, but it looks or like Ted it. Bundy. Or Ted Bundy's. Yeah, you're right. And then you've, and then he listed his birthday as November 22nd. Though his, his actual birthday is November 21st, 1994. Then that probably was him then. Oh, I think it was. Yeah. Or someone, or someone wanting to pretend they're him. Yeah. One of the two, but he's the one who like accurately kept saying things about the case, right? That they oh, had yeah, like, I said, like I said, the only detail he got wrong was was the approximate time these murders would have taken place. Yeah. He got he got the approximate amount of time correct, but but he said it was like from 3:30 to 3 No, 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 excuse me, 3:20 to 3:35. So he yes, yeah, so he knew it only took 15 minutes too. He did. Yes. But see then the affidavit says that all this kicked off at what was it 404 and then he Something left like it that. Yeah, yeah and, Zana, and, that Zana, and that Zana got a DoorDash delivery. So it's a bit different. Like I said, that's the only thing that makes me go, oh, well, maybe it's not him. But everything else is like dead on, in my opinion. And he's the one who mentioned the psychic reading? Yeah. In, in I, the, was, I was so scared. Not, I was so not, scared until they got him. I mean, I was keeping my back door locked and just like, mm -hmm. make sure my house is locked down. I was having nightmares even, Donna. I was just so freaked out. And I, I'm sure we weren't the only ones. It, these, oh, yeah. The brutality of these murders, it was just so heinous. As it's bad as to call for. There's just absolutely no excuse. And mm -hmm. and someone asked, would he keep killing? And the answer is absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. He yeah. was happy with what he did. Yeah. He, he had no remorse whatsoever. None. Yeah. So, yeah. He even would have killed his own mother. Yeah, you saw that clear, very clearly. Yeah. So interesting to me. Well, shall we take a few questions and then and then sure. call for the night? And, okay. and we just want to say a shout out to Summer oh, Wells and all the people who care about Summer Wells, the yeah. five-year-old from Tennessee. It's today's the two-year anniversary of her missing. And uh, mm -hmm. if you're interested. Um, Lauren has a couple of the readings I did on summer here on her channel. And then I have some maps I made on my channel. Donna's that. readings are intense on summer wells. Let me tell yeah. you. Yeah. My readings, I mean, I'm doing them to see if there's anything that might help law enforcement, yes. even though I'm uploading them. So. Yes. Yes. I can't believe it's been two years, Donna. Where's the yeah. time gone? Oh, between Summer Wells. I know. And it it's, sad. So sad. it's sad. It, it's it, that's so kind sad. Of cool. It's it's sad. And there's no answers. It feels like it's just as cold as the day it happened. Yeah. Know? And now the, the parents moved to Arkansas or something like that. Yeah, Did you I know that? that? I heard that. I didn't know if it was true, but I've heard that. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? I can't believe they still go on YouTube all the time. I'm shocked. I'm shocked I know. By that. It's like, who has time to do that when your daughter's missing, right? Yeah, 
It's then, it's sad. Right. And there's some parents of missing kids and they never stop. They never stop. Like yeah. Monkey Yvonne's mom. She yeah. never stopped looking for her son. Yeah. That's real sad. It is like, sad. Uh -huh, because you could I could just tell Brandy's just broken. Oh, you know, who wouldn't be? that's Michael Vahan's mom. Yeah. yeah. He seems so adorable. Yeah. I don't know. Cute little kid. Oh my gosh. So sad. Yeah. Guys, if you have a question that we could answer that Donna can answer, please put your question in and we'll take a few questions. So Anna Franco, Anna Franco asked if I believe Dulce Olivez is still alive. You know, hopefully, and um, psychics can be wrong all the time, but no, I don't believe she is. But she, you never know, you know, but I don't believe so. Well, you know what? I saw a man on top of her and he was choking her. And I told my spirit guides, I can't handle this right now. No, Like I, I said, it's, it's just, if I've done another one within the last month or so, it's just, and so then they put me outside this warehouse. And they showed me like 360, everything around it. So I actually didn't watch to the end to confirm dead or alive, but probably not, you know? Yeah. Oh, I don't know how you do it, Donna, to be honest. It's a lot. Yeah. It really is. And every, anytime I say I'm not going to do it anymore than I do. So I, I don't even bother anymore. It's like, if I see I a face and it just pulls out my heart, then that's like what I said. I just walk in my room and just pray. Yes. Like, please show me what happened. I know. Cause over the years now, since I've known you what three years this month, um, know, that's I happened a few it. times and you're like, I'm yeah. not going to do this anymore. I'm done. I'm done. And, I'm, and then, and then know, I do it again. You do it again. <laughs> it's cause you have yeah. a heart. You have yeah. a heart and you have a yeah. heart for people, you know, and that's, a and I don't like killers to get away with the murder. Exactly. Especially if like children or, you know, domestic violence related, their wives and girlfriends and stuff like that. I stay out oh, of, gosh. you know, the, the gang type things. And, but, but when someone missing children, you yeah. know, you know, what upset me really bad yesterday I stumbled across this YouTube short for it. It's a channel called Tales from the Street. Anyway, it takes place in Phoenix, which is my hometown. And this lady that she's like, a, she lives on the street. She was talking about some terrible, gruesome murder that like happened in my old neighborhood to a seven-year-old girl. For, I guess a few guys did this. Even took off her, you know what, her head. Ard her everything and this never made the news it never made really? the local news here at all i guess her mom had kind of lost sight of her you mm -hmm. know probably was doing other things whatever but mm -hmm. it never was even on the news like why wouldn't that That's be weird the story a seven-year-old yeah. girl gets heinously they found her head in another on another street was she hispanic or i believe so see you notice it's so bullshit. So if you have a little blonde hair, blue eyed kid, they put it oh, on the oh. news. But if you have a little, you know, African American yes. or Hispanic kid, or, or look at all the women who are killed, who are black, like where yeah. are they? Why aren't they on the Gabby Petito uh, right. thing or, or, you know, yeah, I no, know. it's, it's totally unfair and totally horrible. Uh, yeah, why wouldn't that be on the news? Or you hear, heard about Lena, the little one in Texas, the little um, Afghani yes. kid? Yes, yes. You know, it's there, it's there for a headline and then boop, gone. I know. And they never figured out anything with her, right? That was like nope. December 2020 or something, right? And, and December 21st, if you're into the good occult, could be... Yeah. Uh, a good day to do rituals, but if you're into the dark occult, that's a human sacrifice day. So that's probably what I it think. Was. It, it's not winter equinox. I forgot the name of it, but yeah, that's actually my daughter's birthday. Oh my god, on the twenty first. Yeah. So well, on the good occult, they would have good rituals, you know, okay. or even a get together or something like that. It's just, yeah. it's just if you're into the dark or the light. Oh my gosh, very interesting. Hey. 
Um, Faraway Eyes, thank you so much for becoming a member. By the way, guys, I enabled the membership program recently so we can do like case discussions and stuff. So that is available for you if you want to become a member. Thank you so much for becoming a member. And Riddler 3579, where's the weapon? Where's the knife, Donna? Thank you so much for your super sticker. Appreciate it. Thank I you. described what he or somebody did with the knife. Yeah. I described that. Yeah, you so. clearly did. And what she said, for those who are not familiar with maybe her reading, she said that he buried it. And apart from what he buried, you said he buried a body part, a body part. And I said he went to his family's hunting cabin. That's why it's so weird about Jack Showalter going to his family's hunting cabin. That is really weird. Um, but then, you know, if Brian went and hiked in, mm -hmm. I one thing I saw when somebody else was doing a loop. I saw a place where I actually would have turned off because it looked like something I had seen. So I would like to go up there and drive around, but you, you know, we, we don't even know if the police have already found it because they're not True. sharing information. Um, so to go back into that energy, to find out something that may or may not be necessary. I know. I, know. Know, I feel like be. a metal detector could really be useful around the trees in his parents' backyard. In my oh, opinion. Yeah. I sent a letter to the police about that. I was like, you just yeah. look around the shed at least, you know, yeah. or if they have a, if they have a hunting cabin in Pennsylvania to look right. around, but right. he, he wasn't in Pennsylvania at the time of the, that That's first true. reading. That's true. So. That's true. But you could have been seeing in the future because you saw in the future that his parents, that his mom specifically knew he was really off and yeah. In the kitchen. Well, that was on the 28th. So that was the day before he sh he got arrested. So he actually was there at his mom's. So I would have no way of actually knowing that. He was but, at his mother's, at his parents'. But in your, but in your first reading, didn't you also see that he, he had, that the dynamic with his mother was, she knew it was really strange and really off and really dangerous? Yeah, I do remember that. I do yeah. remember knowing yeah. that. So, but she, I mean, she knew that, but that doesn't make her responsible. Or no, anything. no, it's she's just, not responsible at all. It's just no. that he clearly is different. He's weird, oh, for sure. you know, yeah. and he yeah. is. Yeah, for yeah sure. I don't, I don't even, of my personal belief, uh, there's not even an iota of doubt in my mind that they have the right person. I know. I agree. If it comes out that a body part was taken off of one of these victims, I think you said, was it Kaylee that you saw, Donna? Okay. Yeah. If it comes out, guys, you're going to know immediately there's something to this whole conversation we're having tonight. It's pretty wild. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, Dub 71 for the super sticker. I really appreciate it. Let me see if there's any more questions we should take, Donna. And then, oh, here we go. Reverend Donna, any thoughts on what happened to Carly Goose? Uh, Goose? I don't know if I said that name right. Thank you so much, AT, for the super sticker. No, I've never looked into that case. I, I don't even, I don't know if I've ever heard it, to be honest. I think she was a 16-year-old that maybe she had a stepmom she didn't get along with or a stepdad, I, you know, one of her parents. And then she allegedly left the house. Nobody saw her ever again. Was this a more recent case? No, this they, is an old one. Oh, it's an old one. Okay. Yeah. I got you. Okay. Maybe like um, 10 years ago or something. Okay. Let's see. Donna, have you looked into missing Brittany Woods from Mobile, Alabama? No, no. Okay. Let's see, Brenda, uh, Donna, you are amazing. Yes, yeah, she really is amazing. Thank you, Brenda. <laughs> Thank you, Brenda, so much for the super chat. Thank you. Okay, what knife was buried off the Ohio Turnpike? Or, oh, excuse me, she said that knife. Lilypad said that knife was buried off the Ohio Turnpike, she thinks. Interesting. I don't know. Okay, Linda K. Thank you for the super sticker. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Question. Kitty Laughlin says, Donna, did you ever see how the perp escaped with no bloody footprints? I have a theory about this, but you go first. Well, one thing, you know what? When I described the shoes he was wearing, it turns out they're the identical shoes that are in that photo 
when he when he uh, was sitting there with the author at the Handmaid's Tale. Remember they put him. that photo out lately? Yeah, I'll show him because you sent me this picture. Just a second. You were like, those are the shoes. Those yeah, are the shoes, the shoes I saw him wearing. <laughs> yeah. So they go up to the ankle a little bit. Um, Interesting. Yeah. You know, I don't know. And, you know, with the police lack of information, there may be more. But I would think, you know, when they work in the labs and the criminology, they just put the little shoe covers on. Or do you know how the forensic people do? Um, yeah. Did he do that? I don't know. I don't know. I didn't see his. I saw his. They showed me his shoes when he was walking up the side of the house. So mm. once we were in the house, I was more like the level of his head. Yeah. If that makes sense. What if he took his shoes off, Donna, stuck them in a bag and took off on, on in his socks? That would make for no bloody footprints, maybe. Yeah, and he would still be fast. Because you would think if he put boots, it could be slippery. And he was running fast. I mean, right. you know, people that think he couldn't do this in 15 minutes, run across your living room. You will make it there in like seconds, just That's seconds. True. Yeah. So, you know, and he, he wasn't hesitating. He, mm -hmm. There was no, it's not like a big fist fight, like in the movies and a conversation. He just ran in there and started stabbing. Right. So true. Here's another one. Cat H. Thank you so much, Cat. She says, why the delay for roommates to call 911? That is the question of the year, really. What do you think? How would you explain it? I think it's likely uh, what I was saying in um, that reading. Cause they, okay, so before it came out that Dylan had the room upstairs, that Xana reading came out, and there was there's a section about Dylan in there too, and they were showing her panicking and trying to put stuff in a box to throw out in the garbage. Yeah. And then it was a couple of days later it came out she had been in that room. Um, but, you know, having said that, no matter what, I just think I care more about her mental health, like because they showed me how much trauma she was in, that she was at a high risk for hurting herself. And yeah. um, I, I would hate that. And I'm glad that the social media thing has has gone down a little bit on, right. on you know, the bullying, harassing type of talk. So yeah. whatever happened, I mean, she was clearly... She should have called 911, obviously. But you know, when you look at it, she's the new person in the house. Mm -hmm. She's was she a freshman or a sophomore? I think, she, I think she was a yeah, freshman or sophomore, probably a freshman. I think no. she was a freshman, and and like Kaylee was a senior, Maddie was a senior. They were very dominant over her, and yeah. they had parties nonstop. You know, and there's other people that talk about you know, kind of drugs and in Idaho. You, you go to prison for drugs. So, you know. Um, so that could have caused the pause because you said this long before the PCA came out. You said that she you yeah. saw her throwing something into the like gathering it to throw. She, it. In the yeah, trash. she kept trying to find stuff in her room and put it in this box to throw in the dumpster. And yeah. that was before the PCA came out. I said that. Sure. So so I, I would just say that um, that issue but then, and not knowing if he's still in the house, so she has to stay in her room locked, mm -hmm. right? If she did have something and she called the police and they found her with it, she would get in trouble. But but even besides that, these people party all the time. Right. And so why would she just call the police just because they're making a bunch of freaking noise? It's Kaylee's last night there for all she knew. They could have, you know, had someone over there by choice. So, and making a bunch of noise. So, mm -hmm. You know, she's she's not the dominant person that calls the shots in that house. She's the yeah. new person who but who needs to get along with everybody. So there's that issue, too. True. Um, it took me a while to resolve that in my mind. I don't know what it was, but it took a while. I just kept thinking, how did she seriously not call for eight, nine hours, whatever it was? Yeah. But I feel that you and my husband have helped me make the most sense out of it. Cause the way he described it to me was like in a combat situation, he said that you can become so absolutely fatigued from the adrenaline rush that it can even yeah. like, it can even knock you out. And another thing he said that just being suspended in fear, you're like yeah. literally 
you're literally stuck in uh, in time. Anyway, it was it was interesting when he explained it to me. And then what you had said, I finally go, there's probably nothing to this. But for a long time, I had a hard time. I'm not going to kid with you. I did. They showed me what you said your husband said. They showed me that with Dylan, too, because they showed me her falling yeah. back on her bed and her body falls back, but she's not even in her body. It's all like an out of body experience. So that's like shock. Yeah. So, you know, right. at some point when she thinks something's going on and who knows how long that lasted and time mm -hmm. kind of stands still if you're, you know, hiding or Scared you're in shock death. and stuff like that. True. True. So true. I mean, those people will be dealing with that for the rest of their life. Her and her and Bethany. Oh, most definitely. Yeah. And look how close she came. Like, People need to understand that. That's the one thing I, I kept hearing all over um, social media was, well, why aren't they dead? And the reason literally is he did want to kill them. He, yeah. he used up his time allotment that he gave mm -hmm. himself. That's the only reason they're alive. Funny you should say that because this inside looking account, the question is asked, why only the four? Why not the six? He said, well, maybe... The, per the perp was just happy with the number of kills. That's what the inside looking Reddit account said about. Interesting. You know, yeah, very interesting. I'm telling you, everything is like right on. Yeah. Time. So the inside yeah. looking, he even said the front door was open, right? Yeah. He even said the front freaking front door was open before yeah. like anybody said it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just nuts. There's so much to it. If you want to, people in the audience, go back and look into the Inside Lookings Red Reddit account um, posts. Pretty much all of it is exact. Before we were supposed to know those details, they were exact. It's just bizarre. Anyway, well, Donna, I, shall we call it? You good to sure? Is there yeah, anything else I'm running out of energy. Talk? Me too. Yeah. Me too. It's been so great to see you. Thank you everybody for being here with us. Thank you for any new members that join. Thank you for the super sticker, super chats. Thank you so much, Donna, for the wonderful conversation as usual. It's always thank awesome you for having you. me, Lauren. Always. Yeah, thank you for having me. You're always welcome here. So okay. take care. Everybody. Bye, everybody. Take care. Take care. Bye. bye, guys. Bye, Donna. See ya. Bye. Bye.